welcome to this week's Advanced Financial Weekly Update, where we'll be talking about the cost of staying the course. Our first guest is Edward Shu, Senior Investment Manager and Founder of Inception Financial Services. From the Midwest to, the, to a Marine Corps engineer turned financial advisor who is obsessed with teaching people about how to engineer a more reliable retirement plan. Hello, Edward. Robert, how's there it you going? Are. You forgot to mention that I could be a little bit of a clown too, but before I take my mask off. <laughs> oh, there you go. 98.2. I'm good. Well, I guess now I can go ahead and shed this thing. And, uh, you know, Robert, we should probably test you as well. So let me just toss this over to you. Okay. Oh, nice catch there, Robert. Well done. Hold the button. Yeah, there you go. 98.3, does that pass? Yeah, you're good. We also will be talking to Brian Walker, financial advisor and president of the AFI Group, entrepreneur, small business owner, and proud father of two who teaches conservative financial strategies today to protect you from higher taxes in the future. Welcome, Brian. Hey, Robert, how's it going? Good, well, apparently Ed has uh, made me take my temperature before we're allowed to have any sort of uh, even virtual meeting. So it's time to toss you the thermometer. And of course, he's gonna make you do no. that as, nope, nope, nope. No, no, go. I don't want it. <laughs> oh my goodness. There that you go. Throw, Robert, I don't know where you got that arm from because I've seen your dad. It's not that good of an arm. So, <laughs> hey, all right. Well, I'll, I'll test this, but if it comes back higher than 100, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Born my body, body said it was hot, but... Oh, 98. Oh, here we go. 98.6. That's the threshold. So, I guess you're okay and we can continue. Before we get started tonight, we are going to go to Chris Mann's YouTube channel to say a little hello. Hello, it's me. I'm in California dreaming about going out to eat just a burger with cheese. Or a shaken margarita, baby, back ribs from Chili's. Hello, can you hear me? I am shouting out to neighbors who I used to like to see when we were outside and free. Is there something else to watch besides the news and finding Dory? The social distance between us and I'm freaking out. Hello from the inside. It's just me and myself and I. I need to throw Robert. this back over to Robert and uh, we need to recheck him. He might be off a little bit. <laughs> Most definitely. So we're here to talk about staying the course. And if you're like most Americans, I'm sure some of these statements may resonate with you. So Edward, help us better understand the cost of staying the course. 
Okay. So, you know, Robert, it reminds me very much of a story that, that you would tell during the, you know, during a lot of our live classes about the Titanic. And most of us thought the Titanic was unsinkable, right? And as it goes toward the, the iceberg, the captain basically had that exact same thought because everyone had told him, you know, you can stay the course. This ship is unsinkable. And even though the engineers came in and said, hey, you know, we need to go down and check below because they knew engineering wise, they couldn't afford to have three of the bulkheads breach, right? And yet there was a fourth that had breached, but the captain said, no, this ship is unsinkable, maintain our course. And they didn't have time to sound the abandoned ship. So I'm not saying that everyone's portfolios are going to sink like the Titanic. But what I am saying is we need to recognize that just staying the course might not be exactly the right path for us. Right. We need to recognize that opportunities exist during this time. And there are a number of different opportunities that we have that we could potentially take advantage of. So let's talk about these opportunities, gentlemen. Sure. Well, let's first talk about a gentleman that we all know named Warren Buffett, who uh, is an icon when it comes to investing. And there's a quote that he says that says, uh, you know, he's fearful when others are greedy. And we need to be greedy when others are fearful. And okay, but, but I do have to ask. Are, are you really encouraging people to be greedy? No, of course not. I'm not encouraging anyone to be greedy, but this is a great quote that really puts everything in perspective because when we are fearful, there are other opportunities out there. When, when, when the masses are fearful, it presents opportunities. And so we need to be greedy as far as looking for those opportunities. Let's highlight just a few. Uh, Ed, can you give an example? Sure, sure. This is something that I've talked about many times, and it's understanding and knowing where we stand with the risks that we're assuming with the strategies that we have right now. A lot of people don't know. In those cases, I would say evaluate. For some, maybe they have a pretty good idea, but it could never hurt to reevaluate and take a look at what risks we are taking on with the existing investment strategy that we have. Are we willing to accept a certain level of losses for the types of gains that we can get? And those are the things that we wanna look at because the more we know, the more we're educated about the risks that we're taking, the more prepared we are in these types of markets, as well as when the markets are, are you know, performing really well. Is there a way to reduce or mitigate the risk of loss or further loss while still taking advantage of the gains of the recovery? Yeah, so there's a, a saying called tax lost harvesting. And this is somewhat of a complex uh, concept, but just to really simplify, you know, right now a lot of people's portfolios have taken a loss. And you know, there's a saying, it's never a loss or a gain until you cash out, right? So it's all loss or gain on paper, but sometimes it makes financial sense, the numbers make sense to lock in a loss. If your portfolio is down in a certain area, it might make sense to, to lock that in, take the loss so you can then reduce your taxable income for the current year, but then take the sale of that loss and invest in something similar, but maybe under a different category, such as a, a tax-free category, where now you're putting yourself in a position to recover in a tax-free environment and not have to worry about taxes ever again. So you kind of right. took advantage of the situation. Right, because many Americans, let's face it, will have a percentage of lower income due to the shutdown and also some additional tax deductions and credits uh, based on the CARES Act. So where does that leave us in the way of opportunity from 
what, what you spoke of repositioning into tax-free assets. So if that is the case for you, like it is for most Americans, this is a great time to take advantage of doing Roth conversions. And Roth conversions are where we're transferring from a tax deferred investment into a tax free investment. And this is different than the number two opportunity of tax loss harvesting. So we're not locking in any losses in this case, we're just repositioning the umbrella that our investment is under. So the, the last thing I was gonna say is, you know, we, we have an opportunity uh, to recover in this market. And the question I would ask is, would you rather recover in a tax environment or a tax-free environment? Okay, Eddie, so let's take a look at an example of maybe what that looks like. Sure, yeah. No, you know, I mean, it was one of those things that I wanted to show this type of an example and run the analysis for this because when we talk about the cost of just staying the course and potentially passing up opportunities, some of them are tangible, some of them are a little less tangible, right? But here's an example of something that is very tangible of taking advantage of making those shifts that Brian was talking about. The chart we have on the left, essentially is if we just leave the money in an IRA and it grows. And uh, you know, I didn't put down rates of return and tax rates and all of that stuff, but let me just say the left side and the right side, all things are equal, returns, tax rates, all of that. And on the left-hand side, you can see the blue lines represent money after taxes or income after taxes. And the orange line represents the amount of taxes we have to pay on an annual year if we take that income. On the right-hand side, it basically shows taking advantage of what the concepts that Brian was talking about. And what you see is you see those orange lines, it starts off thick and then it goes away. Why is that? Because once we pay those taxes at these lower rates, all that is left is tax-free income. And the difference that makes, basically it costs us over $20,000 less over the course of that 20-year period, $20,000 less in taxes, and it equates to $80,000 in additional income as a result. And that's with tax rates being the same. Yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, and that's assuming that tax rates don't increase. And then we just added another, I don't know, how many trillion on top of that, Ed? Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's one of those things that it, it, I need to stop looking at that every day because, you know, I'm an optimistic person and I hate seeing where that number's going. But yeah, the, the difference so far this year is about three and a half trillion and we're not even halfway through the year yet. So it's uh it's not a not a pretty sight that's for sure yeah and not again not saying that it's not necessary given the circumstances but um you know we're gonna we're gonna have to pay for that at some point yeah for sure and and brian what why don't you help ken i know there's lots of other opportunities we didn't discuss tonight uh due to the cares act the current situation the changing environment but if we had to give the viewer just a snapshot, uh, a takeaway from tonight, what would it be? Well, it's a little quote that I like, and it talks about luck. And luck, in my mind, is where being prepared meets opportunity. We want to be the ones that are dictating our own luck by being prepared and looking for the opportunities. Right. And the preparedness part, I think, is uh, why you guys have been so proactive at doing weekly updates and, and continuing to teach your webinars. Uh, I know you've said it again and again. Look, we're, we just want to keep teaching and keep helping people prepare. But thank you guys for joining us this week. We'll see you next week. Same time. Thanks again. Hey, if you guys, want. Oh, sorry. Ahead. I was going to thank you for not mentioning about my clothes. This is this is what I look like when I don't get to go to the dry cleaners for a month and a half. <laughs> yes. Well, we like it. It's uh, it, I thought it's laundry you. was essential. <laughs> <laughs> in, your, in your natural state, and uh, also we wanted to let people know 
uh, if you want a list of those webinars, uh, feel free to go to our website at uh, theafigroup.com slash events. And of course, as always, like, follow, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get notifications uh, each week when we complete our updates. Thank you so much. Have a good night.